Uh, no, I think it was more because of Sam and he's coming off two ACLs and, and clearly there was intent there by Suggs to, to sort of send him a message and say it's not going to be easy for you. But, you know, I don't think Chip handled it well, to be to be honest. I, I mean, Dean Blandino came out and said it, it, it was a legal play. Uh, and he's the lord and czar of the rules in this league. So when Chip says he knows the rules, well, by definition, he doesn't if he thinks that was an illegal hit. So I, I don't like the fact that he was caught up in the was it a zone read, was it a read option play versus what it wasn't, because that talks about the intent of his play calling, and that's not what this is about. This is about the body language of the quarterback. And that's all the defenders can go on. Yeah, so, you know, Chip Kelly, you were there. He seemed, watching it on television, a little annoyed with the questioning because he wants to get past it. But he certainly seemed like he didn't agree with Dean Blandino's ruling. Yeah, he definitely didn't agree with it. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, Because it was pretty clear, the ruling, and and it's pretty understandable. And you kind of... You, you kind of can you see where Dean's coming from, uh, so you know I, I'm trying to figure out why why Chip was so upset about people labeling it as a read option play. Look, we know there's no intent for Sam Bradford to run at this point. We all know that, uh, you know. And I wrote on on ESPN 97.3 today that uh, you know the whole planet understands that. Terrell Suggs understands that. Everybody does. So. If you want to look at Suggs and say, you know, you broke an unwritten rule, that's legitimate. Uh, And and the fact you're going after one of your peers who's had two consecutive ACL surgeries, probably not the classiest thing in the world to do, no doubt about that. Uh, But as far as the mechanics of the play, he was caught up in this minutia about it not being his own replay. And again, the definition, if you think about it, read option, it tells you what that is. The quarterback has an option on each play, and if you don't want to run and you can't run like Sam Bradford, well, obviously you're not going to. So that to me was a little bit disingenuous. And again, even Bradford today after practice, he talked about the quarterbacks, you know, have to sharpen up their body language. Otherwise, they're going to be able to get hit on plays like that. Yeah, and I, I know Malcolm Jenkins said he'd do the same thing as Suggs did. He said, and then Bradford you know, came back with every play out of the shotgun is in a zone read. So it really sounds like a lot of semantics here. You know, Is the NFL going to have to take a deeper look at the way they call some of these plays now? No, I don't think so. The rule is pretty clear, and that's the part I, I don't understand. Chip understands the rule. He understands Sam Bradford was live on that play, and I don't understand why he's trying to defend the fact that he wasn't. Uh, you know, I I I said in 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 my column, if you go back to the Baltimore San Francisco Super Bowl, which I was at, you know, the Ravens spent that entire week talking to the NFL because if you remember, three weeks prior to that, Colin Kaepernick had set the record for for rushing yards as a quarterback and he made the Packers look silly with that read option and the Ravens were up front they said Yo, look Terrell Suggs he's not going for the faith we're telling them to go after the quarterback the quarterback is alive and and they were pressing the National Football League throughout the whole week saying this is what's going to happen because it's within the rules and Baltimore knows what they're doing as far as that goes and, and Terrell Suggs has been the guy uh, on that particular play, his responsibility is the quarterback. It always has been. It always will be. All right, the hit not uh, as part of the conversation here. What did you think of Bradford? Did you see enough of him that you are ready to shut him down? Uh, or do you think you have to see more of him play on Saturday night? Oh, you have to see more. I mean, there is clearly some rust. I, I, I mean, the positive aspect was he took two devastating hits. The, the second one by by the nose tackle, Brandon Williams was much worse. That was a sternum hit. He, he he went directly on his shoulder. That just, you know, reeked of possible separated shoulder. So the fact that he was able to get up from those two hits in, in his limited playing time, that was the most positive aspect of it because he had to get over that mental hump we always talk about. Uh, and he he got hit probably a lot harder than he wanted to. But that's a positive. And, and the fact that he was able to rebound 
and, and lead the team on a scoring drive, all that is good. Yeah, and he missed a couple throws, which were to be expected. I think the one to Cooper is a throw that if he misses that in the regular season, he's probably taking a lot of heat today. Uh, but, you know, that's something where it's his first throw. He's, the timing's not quite there. But all, all in all, you know, I felt pretty comfortable with him. And, and I agree, the fact that he got those two hits out of the way, I almost say, you know what? The Suggs hit was almost a good thing for him because he got that hit low to say, you know what, I'm healthy. I, I was able to get a low shot and still get up and keep going. Yeah, and that part is good because you're right. It, you know, when you take a shot like that in your knee and you have to say you're healthy, uh, I'm 100% at least structurally, and, and that was, I think, the most positive aspect of what came out of that, you know, cameo appearance, which with the penalties was 14 plays. So, Obviously, you can't shake off the rust in that limited amount of time, uh, but it was all positive as far as Sam Bradford goes. Uh, you know, I'm concerned <laughs> that, as I wrote today, I'm concerned that Chief Ke- Chip Kelly's going to keep putting them on this island with an unblocked defender, though. I- I'm very concerned about that, and I-, I just don't agree with that mentality. Yeah, you know, and you wrote about it at 97.3 ESPN.com, is he counting on Bradford too much? You know, in the past it seemed like the quarterback was holding them back and he kind of coached that way, that my quarterback's holding me back. Is he now relying too much on Bradford, who's you know, needs to, to be get healthy and, and have his mindset? Is he saying, man, this guy's got so much talent that I can put so much more on his plate? Well, I, I, I'm not concerned about the throwing aspects. As, as far as the decision-making, as far as throwing the football, he can put all of that on Sam Bradford's plate. That's not the aspect I'm concerned with. But, you know, we always talk about Chip Kelly being this offensive genius. And, and to me, his, his system has not changed, no matter who's been playing the quarterback position, whether it's Michael Vick, uh, who's obviously extremely mobile, or it's Nick Foles, who is not or it's Sam Bradford, who obviously is not, at least at this point. Uh, his system does not change. All right, uh, John McMullen's with us, 97.3 ESPN.com, today's pigskin.com for his national stuff as well. But uh, we'll keep it local. The three, the, the number three quarterback spot, I've been saying all day, it, it's probably the most high-profile number three quarterback competition in the history of the NFL. I mean, these two guys are both huge college stars Who's got the leg up at this point? Well, I think Tim Tebow has the leg up in Chip Kelly's mind because I think he has the mentality that he wants more of a specialist in that position. You kind of understand if you're down to your third quarterback, no matter who it is, you're in deep, deep trouble. So uh, to me, from the start of this, it's been clear that that Chip kind of makes excuses when Tim does things wrong. Uh, And he likes it, and he likes what he brings to the table. Uh, it's very difficult for rookies to learn both positions, and I think, you know, Rose got everything they want as far as being an outside corner, and he kind of took a step back when they started giving him some looks inside in the slot, and that's not a big surprise. So, you know, about differences, I, I don't know if you see Sam that long. I, I don't advocate them playing DeMarco Murray at all. You know how I feel about that. I think – you know, he kind of showed last week he's ready to go. There's nothing wrong with him. He looked very crisp, very explosive, and, and I would go the Adrian Peterson route with him and just, you know, put the bubble wrap on him. You don't need a running back to get reps in preseason games, especially a proven one like that. But you're right, certain guys, Michael Kendricks, if he's able to go, Kiko Alonso is said he, he expects to play. Those guys have to get some significant reps because – uh, they haven't been on the field all that much at practice recently, uh, and, and that's part of it. You know, part of it is conditioning and getting ready to play a full 60 minutes if you're a starter in this league. So uh, it's a very important game. It's probably the only important preseason game to be on. But things differ with, for the Eagles, especially at the quarterback position, because I'm not sure I want Sam Bradford out for three quarters. Uh, I, I think you kind of know early in the season – no matter what the Eagles do, he's going to be shaken off. So I, I'm not as concerned to get some, you know, a vast amount of reps in, in, in preceding three. Hey, Wick, um, we know Thurman and Jenkins, but, you know, Wolf, Wolf, are they going to use a Brzezinski or a Maragos? Are they the next guys up if, if, at safety? Right, talked about it last are week. Are they okay and, with that? I mean, I see they keep bringing guys in, but 
uh, these, you know, Pruszynski and Marigold has been in, I presume. Uh, yeah, well, you know, they said, hey, he's just, you know, pretty much a camp body. Matt Reynolds is still in the conversation because he had the big, you know, two-interception game and, and, and the first preseason game. Uh, but Davis said, you know, the two names he mentioned were Marigos and Pruszynski, and you can't be happy with that death no matter what the Eagles say. So I, I think if there's likely to be a waiver wire pickup, uh, you know, for the final 53, and most teams do pick up a player or two, from outside the organization, uh, I think safety would be the most logical spot because there just isn't a lot of talent behind Jenkins and Thurman's, Thurman, and, and the Eagles need to upgrade uh, at that position. All right. I didn't ask you about the wideouts, but let me do that real fast. Aguilar, I thought, has really looked good. I like his explosion, caught four or five balls. I know the one he dropped, Steve Smith gave him a little earful. Uh, I think that Jordan Matthews, and I know one of the Baltimore writers was really impressed with Matthews at practice last week, saying he was, you know, far away the best player on the field. Are they more sound at receiver than you thought coming into camp? Well, I, I think they have talent, but it's obviously inexperienced talent. Uh, it, you know, Matthews has been great, but my biggest concern with him is the fact that we've talked about it before. I don't like the way the Eagles pigeonhole him as strictly a slot receiver. I, I think he's their best receiver. And if you look at other teams and how they use top tier receivers, they kind of move them all over the formation, try to get, you know, the best available uh, matchups they can get. And if you're an opposing defensive coordinator playing the Eagles, you know where Jordan Matthews is going to be on every play. He's going to be in the slot. I, I don't like that. He's their best receiver. They have to get out of that mentality and, and get him moving around the field. And as far as Aguilar, you know, he's a tremendous route runner for a rookie, so he's way ahead of the game. And I, I think it's time to, you know, admit that he's a better receiver already than Josh Huff. So I think he's got to be elevated uh, to that number one unit, which is basically the three receivers. And people aren't going to be happy, but Riley Cooper is going to be one of the outside receivers. <laughs> and, and, and that's just the way it well, is. Well, if, if, if you say Aguilar is better than Huff, could Barner knock Huff out? No, I mean, Huff's going to make the team. I, he, he's a, a legitimate option. You need uh, at least five competent receivers in this league and and, and he's certainly uh, going to be part of this offense and, and get a uh, whether Aguilar beats him out or not he's going to get a significant uh, number of you know snaps on a weekly basis so when I say Aguilar is better that's not to say Huff shouldn't be on this team he certainly should be he certainly will be now if you keep Barner where it can help a guy like Huff is he might not have to be the kickoff returner and, and he can concentrate on offense strictly, and that might help him in that regard. All right, uh, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, of course, uh, all over the Eagles and uh, our daily look at the Eagles here on the Sports Bash. Is, uh, they got a big uh, weekend coming up to see uh, who plays, and a lot of battles still out there. for Rob. This is a very hard 53-man roster to put together. There's some very good battles going on. We'll break them down throughout the rest of the week as John will be at camp and at 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks, John. Hey, thanks, Mike.